I love Shaw, and uh, I had directed Major Barbara with Stacy playing Major Barbara, and uh, become quite addicted to Shaw. Mrs. Warren's profession it is such, it's one of his early plays, and uh, it's, I think, his most exposed play, and I was very, very interested to look at the play in terms of who Shaw was uh, at that time, uh, how he was, how he was speaking really about his own mother, his own father, his own, the guy he thought maybe was his real father, uh, his whole, uh, a mother that was very distant, uh, someone that he felt like he never really knew but worshipped from afar. I was really interested in how, how personal he, he made this play. And there's a wonderful quote, I said it at the first day of rehearsal, um, where he goes, sometimes I look at this play and I can barely, I can barely watch it because it's, some of the moments are so appalling, but it's the best play I ever wrote. Ah, uh, I had courage then. <laughs> Shaw, you always hear a well-spoken production of Shaw, but rarely do you hear a primal production of Shaw spoken in that language. And I found that when, and that it's all underneath there. There are plays where you kind of explode, the language is not as important as the things that explode. His language is the architecture, but the stuff that pushes underneath it, do you <coughs> Does that make sense? Speaking as a performer, it's like you, it's all there, and then you pull it all apart and and do this what feels like something almost too modern, and then you go right back to the language with all of that information, and it comes out bam, double. <laughs> double. Yeah. 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 But it's architecture is, the, is a great word for that. It's exactly where it is, and you can climb on it and swing on it, and <laughs> it's solid stuff, really solid, and yet very deft at the same time. It's not polite. It, that, that's why when you, when you hear it read, you think, it, I mean, it can sound fabulous and smart, but it also can sound very polite. And then mm -hmm. when you start to work on it, you realize, oh, this, is, this shouldn't just be a little kiss. This is a mother and a daughter discovering each other. This has to be like a huge, it's got to be enormous This when they hug each other and say goodnight. It's not just Good night, you know, yeah. something gigantic has that's happened. happened. Yes. Yes. I was very excited about working on this particular political message and the, the message of how um, poverty forces people to make decisions that are immoral, even for themselves. And prostitution is such a great um, uh, metaphor for the bigger story about poverty forcing us to make horrible life choices. So this is Warren, uh, the story that comes out about her is that she had to do this. And then she was also a career woman. You know, there had just been uh, all these factories sprawling all over England, employing people at, you know, sixpence a, a day or, you know, just a very low level. And so then Sean comes in and, he's, and, and Kitty says, if I've got the looks, why shouldn't I be make, you know, have been making the money? And so Shaw has this idea of the new woman that he called her, who was driven by the need to be financially <coughs> secure on her own. It's sort of why I love those melodramas, why I love Shaw and Wilde, you know? So few guys got those women up there and put their minds to 100% of their capacity and let them go at it. He gives his women something to say. They're allowed to speak for themselves and, and argue their point of view right alongside men and, and often come out on top. Um, in their, they, they tell the truth as much as, I, they may lie to, to protect themselves, but they do argue their point fiercely and passionately. Yeah, yeah. there's four, four men um, and, uh, and, and the two women but it's not so much divided, I don't think, by the men and the women, but more about generations. That there's a young man and there's a young woman, and then there's there's the older people. And one of the interesting stories is, is what do the older people want from these kids? As our costume designer Meg Neville said, this is right before everything falls apart, costume-wise, and of course that reflects society. It went from corsets, in 20 years, you had Coco Chanel with nothing underneath. 
there. And everybody looked, you know, like a little gammon thing, you know, completely different idea of womanhood. And this is like right on the cusp of that. And so the idea of what a young woman can be was vastly different. And Shaw was seeing this, he was seeing this sort of mercenary thread through these people, not necessarily bad, not that they were without heart or emotion or the possibility of love, but that they were very able to go, okay, this is the game, fine. This is how I'm gonna play it. One of the interesting things of it is who is Vivi? She, Shaw defines her as very, very chilly, um, and yet we, uh, as we explore her, we, we discover that, of course, she wants a mother. She wants to know who her mother is. We all want to know who our mothers are, who our families are, where we come from. Um, as a way of def defining ourselves, and so if that knowledge is um, is removed, it's 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 frustrating and and makes you feel powerless. Uh, yeah, and I, I think that you know it all comes from where you, where you learn to place self value as a kid. You know, and with someone like Vivi, when your mother's absent most of the time, you know, and you are what do you have? You have schoolwork. You know, and so pouring yourself into your work, and that's what Vivi has, and that's how she's based her entire identity is in her ability to. You know, make things happen and to be the top and to to push through. And so I think that part of it is, you know, finally confronted with her mother for maybe for the first time. You know, it's kind of like, well, what are these emotions? What does that feel like? And is that going to be a good fit for me or not? You know, and there's kind of a certain danger in letting those emotions out because once they're out, it might be too painful to put back in. Again. When the play was first staged, there was a review that said. Um, she is a cardboard cutout character. One cannot feel any warmth or empathy mm -hmm. for her at all. You see this young woman play this part, you cannot stay there. There's so much alike, Vivi and, and Kitty, Warren, so much alike, but they are opposite sides of the same coin, which means they will never see eye to eye. Um, I think you'd want Kitty on your side in a street fight, and you'd want Vivi on your debate team. <laughs> <laughs> to get you out of jail when you've got But I mean, that's the strength, <laughs> you know. When, you, when you're an emotional fighter and you're not allowed to use your emotion, you're, suddenly your, your hands are tied and, and the person who knows how to speak and keep their temper wins. <laughs> you know, they're an amazing pair. It's an amazing pair of women in one play. Usually you get one woman like this per play or per 17. Everybody, each act, everyone thinks they have the truth. Ah, that's the truth. That's what's really going on. And then the sun shifts, and the t and time passes, and generations go on, and all of a sudden you go, that's not the truth. This is the truth.